On an aircraft carrier, there is a team of approximately 6,000 employees whose job it is to ensure that each and every operation performs successfully. However, due to the large number of people there, it is likely that someone will become disoriented and fall into the body of water. If someone were to fall into the water and become missing, what would happen? It is typically impossible for the personnel of an aircraft carrier to fall overboard due to the numerous safety precautions that are in place on the ship, but it is not impossible as well. Aircraft carriers are well equipped when it comes to these type of situations, so you bet they have already foreseen how they would handle if a sailor went overboard as well. On the other hand, there have been occurrences in which crew members from aircraft carriers have accidentally fallen into the water. It is essential for you to be aware of the fact that the height of a typical modern aircraft carrier can reach into the tens of meters at its highest point. When a person strikes the surface of the water after falling from a considerable height, the tension on the water surface will make them feel as they are falling on cement. This is because the surface tension of the water is greater than the surface tension of cement. This is because there is a tension at the surface of the water, which is causing the phenomenon. This is due to the fact that just like the ground itself, the force of gravity also functions on the water and as a result, a person will most likely pass away before they can be rescued. This is because of the fact that the force of gravity also operates on the ground itself. Now, everyone is fully aware that this process has the potential to be pretty laborious. However, there is no need to be concerned since in this video we will explain in great depth how exactly this process functions. Hello and welcome to this episode of High Technology. In this episode, we will talk about how aircraft carrier crew handle a man overboard. If you enjoy contents like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so you won't miss an amazing episode. Now, let's get started. Aircraft carriers like other types of warships are equipped with specialized safety systems in the event that a member of the crew were to fall from the ship while it was in the incorrect posture. In addition to the guardrails, the aircraft carrier features its very own safety net for added protection. However, the guardrails on the aircraft carrier may fold when not in use and are not overly complicated to operate. This has an effect, albeit a limited one, on the military function that it performs. The transportation of combat aircraft is an aircraft carrier's primary mission because it is responsible for the essential duty. It is possible to construct a substantial runway on the deck of the aircraft carrier, which can be used for the takeoff and landing of combat aircraft. Because any of the typical guardrails that may be installed on the deck of the aircraft carrier would prevent the fighter from landing or taking off, the guardrail on the carrier needs to be able to retract. Additionally, anti-fall nets are secured to the ship's side extension at the beginning and ending positions of the runway on the deck of the ship. There are the parts of the region where there are no safety barriers. As a result, the nets are positioned in such a way as to prevent members of the crew from falling falling into the ocean. Additionally, the crew on the aircraft carrier has been through extensive training, making it extremely unlikely that anyone will accidentally fall into the water during their time there. When a member of the crew actually does fall into the water, what sorts of safety measures or procedures are put into effect? Anyone who is on the ship and witnesses someone going overboard is required to yell man overboard, starboard, or port side to the navigation bridge. These phrases must be said in either direction, indicating which side of the ship you are on is absolutely necessary in light of the fact that the ship will be rotated in that direction. Even if the person in the water is unable to be seen, a life ring is quickly thrown over the same side. The officer who is in charge of the command or control of the engines is the one who gives the instruction to sound the alert across the board. When the man overboard warning rings, a number of the sailors on board will congregate in a particular location in order order to get themselves ready to lower one or more boats in order to form a rescue team. If they are not immediately involved in the search and rescue effort, members of the crew must report to the muster stations that are appropriate for their position in order to keep a tally of them. The bridge is informed of the muster counts as soon as they become available. You might ask what indications should there be that a member of the ship's crew has gone missing? The ship immediately begins a search and rescue operation in the hope of locating the person who went over 
overboard and bringing them back. To what extent though are they planning to hunt for the guy who disappeared after jumping into the water? The ship handling maneuver known as a man overboard rescue turn which is also commonly referred to as a person overboard is generally carried out as soon as it is verified that a person has fallen overboard into the water. There are a few maneuvers that can be carried out in order to bring a vessel closer to where a person is standing. These maneuvers include the Scarnell turn, the Williamson turn, the Q turn which is also referred to as the figure 8 turn, and the Anderson turn. All of these maneuvers are examples. A Williamson turn is a form of maneuver that is used to send a ship or boat under power back to a point that it has previously passed. The choice of maneuver is determined by a number of factors, some of which are the location of the person who went overboard, whether the person was immediately observed going overboard, or if their missing status was reported at a later time. The area that is available for navigation by the vessel, whether the ship is using its engines or its sails, and a few other aspects of the situation as well. It was named after Lieutenant John Williamson, a member of the United States Navy, in recognition of his heroic actions in 1943 when he utilized the vessel to rescue the life of a man who had fallen overboard. According to the Book of Uncommon Carriers written by John McPhee, the technology was formerly known as the Budokan pipe. This information comes from the book. During the Russian-Japanese war, it was used in order to keep weaponry at the same distance from the adversary as possible. Additionally, nuclear-powered submarines of the United States Navy employed it to eliminate the dead spots on the sonar systems of their vessels. When nighttime eyesight is poor or when the location of the individual who fell overboard has been out of view for a considerable amount of time, the Williamson turn is the maneuver that should be employed. In addition, it is the most effective when used while the point is still quite close. On the other hand, it is able to be modified to fit any circumstance. The Anderson turn is a typical maneuver that is performed to bring an engine-powered ship or boat back to a site that it has already traveled through. It is also commonly referred to as a single turn. This is typically done in order to get rid of a victim as quickly as is reasonably possible. The Anderson turn is utilized rather frequently when it is still possible to see the goal. There are some scenarios in which a Scarno or Williamson turn might be better to the current one. When dealing with a man overboard situation, the vessel should always be directed upwind of the person who has gone overboard in order to reduce the risk of any injuries occurring. In the worst possible scenario, the journey back to the starting location will be longer regardless of whatever option is chosen. The individual ought to be moved a sufficient distance away from the blades of the propellers while the engine of the vessel are turned off. In the case that a crew member goes overboard from a sailing vessel, the customary course of action is to perform a rapid turn, often known as a quick turn. Even if there are other methods, this one continues to be reliable. And depending on the circumstances, it could end up being the most effective line of action. When there are not enough crew members on board or when the ship is negotiating turbulent waters, the rapid turn method which prevents a jibe is especially advantageous. The rapid turn method is effectively a figure 8. And that finally wraps up today's episode. As always, thank you so much for watching this episode of High Technology. Let us know what you think of this episode in the comment section down below. We absolutely love to hear from you. Make sure to give this video a like and subscribe if you haven't already. See you again next time.